Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a retractable car gate. With the simple button press all of the car gate will retract and by pressing the button once more it will all come right back. This is super useful in builds to stop cars as you can hook it up to things like a daylight sensor, a lever, etc. to actually stop the cars. As you can see, these poles are kink like chew, which means that things cannot go through them. As you see, the car actually gets stopped, yet the player can simply walk through or jump over it. Anyways, let's see what we're going to need for a tutorial. Also note that you will need an alternate account or a friend to help you out, but you can make alternate accounts on Roblox for free, so no biggie. Anyways, to start off, you're going to grab one of these straight conveyor switch rights and place them on the ground like so. Now remember when placing that when the gate is up, it will be in a position somewhat like this. Just keep that in mind when building. Anyways, to start off, you're going to grab one of these short smooth wall stubs right here. And this is just a blueprint for guiding, you actually don't need it for the build. Anyways, from there it's time to use your alt account. Simply bring up your alt account and whitelist them on your main account. Then have your alt account go over to the conveyor switch right, E, move it, and then unwhitelist them on your main account. Then press B on your alternate account and re-whitelist them. For them, the conveyor will be gone, but for your main, it will still be there. Now you can grab another conveyor and place it like so on this guide so that the front of it is facing like this. It should like look like this on your main account. If you don't really understand what I'm doing here, just keep watching the video slower. You'll understand it eventually. I'm basically just using a glitch that makes the blueprints invisible for my alt account. Once you repeat this for all of your conveyors, you'll get something that looks like this. Now you can go ahead and delete this guide blueprint, and you're on to step 2. Next up is door placing. Now the first thing you're going to want to do here is grab one of these small floors, place it one stud away from the conveyor like so. From there grab a large floor, tilt it, and place three of them in a row like so. Next up, it's time for your doors. Start off by grabbing a basic glass door and hovering it over the edge of this conveyor. You're going to need to place it by using rotate and turn as you cannot place it exactly. This is the most finicky part of building this structure and it's very rage inducing if you don't get it in the first couple of tries. Basically you want to place it so that the knob is just barely in the conveyor at the very edge of it. You know it works if after e move being the door you can move the whole conveyor arm with it. Keep placing your glass doors three studs apart from each other so that they are at the edges of the conveyors. Again, you can go back and test if it works along the way by seeing if when moving it, the arm opens with it. Once all of your doors are in place and it's all working, grab your large floor and place it one stud below the already existing large floor blueprint. This is where your road should be. Place your second large floor over it and now you have a floor to connect everything onto. Anyways, from there, remove all of your extra- Hey you, are you sick of boring videos such as Electrotex? Do you want to learn literally everything about last year's updates and some epic tutorials? Well, search no further as Aquaflow is here. By that we mean the YouTuber, not the Aegis. Aqua's amazing editing and thumbnail concepts will hook you in. Anyways, make sure to subscribe to Aquaflow because you actually figured out this glitch and Electro is just ripping him off. Okay, bye. Bu uh, buy Aqua's merch too. It's on the page. Go do that. Just buy it now. Anyways, now it's time to move on to your wiring. First off, you're going to need an input. I recommend a button as it's just the simplest, 
But like I said before, you can use a daylight sensor or a lever. It all depends on what you're really going for. Anyways, from there, connect one wire from your input to the ground right here. Place it on a 90 degree angle so it's facing outwards like so. That's where you're going to connect all of your other wires up to. Let's start by connecting one wire from there to this first door. Now, if you repeat this process for every single door, they should all activate with a single button press. Note that you need to make sure that they are all getting powered from that one initial wire, or else you might need to replace them. Along with that, if you place them too deep in, you'll get this error where you cannot place the wire like I got here a few times. Again, just make sure that you're all placing it right. Anyways, if done right when hitting the button, everything should go upwards. Now it's time for phase 2. Start grabbing your remaining wires and wire them up back from the input down onto the second layer here. Start by connecting one onto this button right here. Then from there, wire it up from the tip of that wire to the next door button. And keep repeating this process until all the doors are connected. And just like that, the build is done. Pushing the button once will retract the gate, while pushing it again will bring it back up. Thank you all for watching to the end of the video. If you like the content, make sure to leave a like down below and consider subscribing. Like we said in the funny commercial, Random Flows, aka Aquaflow, did help me out building this design as he was the one who came up with the whole conveyor arm welding thing. So make sure to go check out his channel in the description. Anyways, this is going to be it for me, and I'll see you in the next video once it's out. I just stole Aqua's line too. Goodbye.